assalamu alaikum welcome you all in the second lecture of diabetic retinopathy i'm sorry i am a bit late today just few words about uh, the previous lecture the what is actually the diabetes is the is a multi systemic disease which basically have got a um, micro angiopathy affecting the eyes and macro angiopathy affecting the other important organs of the body including heart brain and limbs and talking about the micro angiopathy and how it affects the you can recall that uh, it affects the capillaries the pericytes of the capillaries loss of pericytes formation of aneurysms and then the intra there is a thickening of the uh, wall of the membrane and then the intraluminar changes of the rbcs and the platelets accumulation resulting in occlusion and occlusion resulting in in ischemia and infarction and all this give rise to to different clinical features which you can actually see while you are doing examination of the retina particularly of the posterior pole that is the important part is the 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 macular area which is important most important part of the retina giving you the central vision so the what are the possible this is a very important question you, you know the what are the possible causes of decreased vision in the patients of diabetic retinopathy you have to mind or you you have to remember that only when the changes diabetic retinopathy changes they affect the macular area that means the central part of the or when it affects the optic disc then we will have we will be having the decrease in the vision <coughs> the particularly if you have got a background non proliferative diabetic retinopathy which is not still affecting the macular area and the disc will not result in any significant decrease in the vision so one have to learn that what are the possible uh, situations in diabetic retinopathy which may give rise to the to the deterioration of vision and one of these is what is called as diabetic maculopathy the second is diabetic papillopathy that means papillitis or inflammation of the optic disc it is it is relatively rare as compared to the diabetic maculopathy but still it is there the third cause of decrease in the vision is the vitreous hemorrhage when the the proliferating or the new blood vessels in the retina they bleed into the vitreous it causes sudden loss of vision in addition to the, to these three basic or three direct causes of diabetic retinopathy including the maculopathy the optic disc involvement the inflammation and the vitreous hemorrhage the diabetic retinopathy can indirectly cause sudden loss of vision by affecting either the central retinal artery or the branch retinal artery or the central retinal vein or the central or the branch retinal vein of um, of the area which is apply supplying the macular area again it is the involvement of the macular area in these vascular occlusion we do are going to study these vascular occlusion afterwards but in in the cases of diabetes these are or sometimes in hypertension the vascular changes may cause one of because decrease or deep deterioration of vision which may sometimes be sudden or with if there is a gradual increase of the macular involvement in diabetic retinopathy it may cause a gradual decrease in the vision so one have to rem to remember the causes of decreased vision in diabetic retinopathy is the involvement of the macula involvement of the disc and the vitreous hemorrhage so talking about the diabetic maculopathy again you i'll ask you to remember that the diabetic maculopathy could be present at any stage could be present at the any stage of the diabetic retinopathy even in the background early background diabetic retinopathy may accompany this maculopathy 
Similarly, the pre-proliferative or the proliferative or advanced diabetic eye disease all may accompany the maculopathy. So the presence of the maculopathy is very important or, or initiation or you, know, you, see, you see the uh, recognition of involvement of the macula in diabetic patients is extremely important in treatment and prevention of decrease in the vision. So diabetic maculopathy could, could either be an exudative type of diabetic retinopathy or it could be ischemic maculopathy or it could be a mixed type. We have already uh, discussed this in the previous lecture, but this is for the repetition. I wanted to know or wanted to see an important slide, so you should know uh, the the exudative diabetic retinopathy. Again, I I told you in the previous lecture that it could be an exudative maculopathy, could either be focal or diffuse, or it may be in the succinate form. We already seen it may be as a form of the star, or it may be as a cystoid macular edema, which you already saw the previous lecture. And again, just to remind you, this is a petal-like uh, fe feature in the angiography you could see in the right side of your picture is the cystoid macular edema. And these cysts could be demonstrated in OCT, ocular tomography by using a high frequency ultrasound machine. So we can have multiple cysts in the area of the fovea and the macula giving rise to increased thickness and edema and which is visible. One could see the retina being involved in the cystoid macular edema. Similarly, the, you, can, you can see the adematous maculopathy in the succinate maculopathy. You can see there is a circle of hard exudates, which indicating there is a central leaking large blood vessel. Similarly, a smaller circle is here. And this is the area of the hemorrhages that this requires. This is all involving the macular area and the posterior pole causing a significant decrease in the vision. This is what is an extra foveal succinate. This is the area which is not actually affecting this part, which is the fovea, which is actually is important for vision. And although there is an edema which is nearby, we call it an exudative maculopathy, but still it is extra foveal. And you can see here is the area where the blood vessels are leaking. While we are discussing the, 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 the management, you can see this is the, again, the management of the uh, of the maculopathy or the diabetic retinopathy. You can see all these, uh, are the, this is a ischemic blood uh, disc and there is a leaking blood vessel and this is a leaking blood vessel, this is angiography. This is ischemic diabetic. You can see there are no visible capillaries or a background uh, dye which is indicative of an absence of the blood flow in these areas or these black areas. They are indicative of a sphere ischemia and this ischemia actually results in, in the formation of the new vessel, which are visible here on the disc. And the treatment of this type of disease is to, to, to treat all this area, which has already been treated and patient develop after ischemic of maculopathy may develop after the, your treatment as well, if not due to the disease. So the talking about the management of the principles of the management of the diabetic retinopathy, this is the start of the today's lecture. The, the previous one was all the repetition of the previous lecture. The adequate control of diabetes is mandatory in all types of diabetic retinopathy. You have to, uh, I mean, uh, have an adequate control of, uh, of diabetes and the good control of the, of, the, of the hyperglycemia is very extremely important. Non, although uh, when once the, the severe diabetic retinopathy starts, it may not be the under control of the of the level of the blood glucose, and it go it may be a may continue to progress irrespective of the of the level of the blood sugar. But still, it is extremely important and mandatory in in all types of diabetic retinopathy to control the diabetes. First thing, adequate control of the diabetes. Second, the in cases of non proliferative diabetic retinopathy. No treatment is actually required except the good control of diabetes to prevent the progression of the disease. In pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, we are talking about the principles. First thing, adequate control of diabetes. Number two, in non-proliferative background diabetic retinopathy, no treatment is required. Only if when the macula is involved in pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, and the, and the background diabetic retinopathy, 
when the treatment is required. In cases of pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, even in the absence of the, of the maculopathy, you have to go for falling. One, it is a close follow-up with repeated fundus examination and with fundus angiography to look for any, any ischemic areas and to go for the treatment to prevent, to change this pre-proliferative into proliferative. The management actually includes that one should prevent the progression of the retinos retinopathy from pre-proliferative to proliferative is the aim of the treatment for pre-proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So close follow-up is, is, is essential. And if follow -up, and if you feel, particularly in our country, the patient coming from very remote areas, if you feel that the patient will not come for follow-up, it is better to go for a pan-retinal photocoagulation called as PRP. What is a PRP? I'll show you the picture afterwards that we apply laser to almost whole of the posterior pole except the fovea and the macular area which is there within the vascular arcade just to decrease the oxygen or the blood requirement of the of the of the retina so that the smaller areas which are left and the area of the macula which is left is probably be provided by the by the by the already present or the patent blood vessels and so to have a good central vision afterwards although you may have may lose some of your peripheral vision with the development of the focal uh, scotomas or the visual field effects. But to save the central vision, you have to destroy, you have to cause a sterile dis destruction of the most of the posterior pole of the retina, so to have a good vision of the center. If it is possible to follow up, then you have to follow and whenever there is a, there, there is a, there is a requirement for, for the treatment, you have to go for the same treatment as mentioned. The third, the associated maculopathy may require investigation with an optical coherent tomography and the fundus fluorescein angiography and will require treatment accordingly. That means this treatment, when there is involvement of the macula, we will dis discuss the management of the maculopathy afterwards. But at present, if adequate control of the diabetes, number one, if there is a non-proliferative non background, no treatment is required. And if there is a pre-proliferative diabetes, the, the follow-up is important. And if the patient is not able to follow, go for a pan-retinal photocoagulation. And any associated maculopathy is dealt with according to the, to, the, to the principles of management of the diabetic maculopathy. So the proliferative diabetic retinopathy, uh, the, the third stage, is a vision threatening disease. And so it requires a prompt treatment. As have, I have already mentioned, when you have got a pre-proliferative di diabetic retinopathy, it is our due to, duty to prevent progression of this stage into the next proliferative stage, which is a vision threatening disease. So, but one have to go for photocoagulation of the ischemic areas, which are shown by the FFA or the angiogram. Then you have to go for a pan retinal photocoagulation if there's a falling situation. If you see any neovascularization of the disc, if you see NVE of more than one half of the disc diameter, and if there is a vitreous hemorrhage, you have to go for a pan retinal photocoagulation. The third thing is what is called as anti VEGF therapy. That means when there is a neovascularization, as we know that it is the it is the formation of the vascular endothelial growth factor which actually initiate and causes progression of the neovessel formation. So using an anti-VEGF of, of uh, medication directly into the vitreous so that it go directly onto the retinal blood vessels is the treatment for sometimes for the prevention uh, of or for, for the treatment of these neovascularization to stop the neovascular for new, new vessel formation and to improve the existing leakage of these uh, blood vessels that is called as retinal or macular edema. So anti vegf therapy, the, dr the drugs which are usually most commonly used in our country is uh, caused at bevacizumab. It is called as Avestin and there is another which is Ranizumab. It is the generic name is, is and the trade name is Lucentis. These are, there are other few medicines available in multiple different companies, but these are the two which are the prototype. These are used as an intravitreal injection of a very small amount of 0.05 ml. 
0.05 ml. It is not 0.5. It is 0 0.05 ml volume. And so it results in very less increase in the intraocular pressure if you give this injection. So the, the treatment of uh, the PDR, I again, I uh, repeat this, that that is a photic coagulation ischemic areas immediately, the pan retinal photic coagulation in the situations of NVD, NVE and the vitreous hemorrhage and anti-VEGF therapy in the presence of, of uh, 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 neovascularization and macular edema. The last stage, when you know that there is an already uh, in, in, the, uh, in the proliferative diabetic retinopathy, the vitrectomy is required. What is a vitrectomy? We go into the vitreous, making a three ports in the pars plana, one for the light, one for the cutter, and one for uh, maintenance of the intraocular pressure. And so this is what is called as three-port pars plana vitrectomy. This includes removal of the disease vitreous along with the removal of the surface membranes and any of the traction of the vascular band which are there, they are removed. And at the same time, you apply laser to the retinal breaks or the retinal areas which require treatment for, for, for laser treatment. So the vitrectomy is indicated in, the, in diabetic patients in the following situation in which there is advanced uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy with fractional detachment. And in case of vitreous hemorrhage, until you remove the vitreous, it is extremely difficult to have a good vision. And so in persistent cases of vitreous hemorrhage in diabetics, you have to remove the vitreous. And so it is a com when there is a combined fractional arachmatogenous detachment, one have to reattach the retina after doing the above three uh, procedures which are included in the parts plan of vitrectomy. The removal of the vitreous along with the removal of the surface membranes, removal of the tractional fibrovascular bands, and application of the laser. So the management of the diabetic maculopathy, as I have already mentioned, that it is when the macula is involved, then it causes a decrease in the vision. When the disc is involved, the diabetic retinopathy results in decrease in the vision. And when there is a diabetic uh, uh, vitreous hemorrhage, the division is decreased. So all these three parts, they have to be managed in these patients of diabetic retinopathy. And so we have already talked about the parts plan of vitrectomy in case of vitreous hemorrhage. And then the management of diabetic maculopathy, it requires a separate mention because it is important and very common cause of a sometime irreversible loss of vision in diabetic patients. So diabetic maculopathy is a usual cause of deteriorating vision and uh, may all be present in all types of diabetic retinopathy stages. Anti-VEGF therapy already mentioned, multiple injections are required at an for an adequate treatment. These injections of the drugs which I have mentioned, the Avastin and the Lucentis, the Ranizumab and the Avastizumab, these are given in amount of 0.05 ml into the vitreous and they have to be repeated uh, after every four weeks to one month, whatsoever is suits for the, for the patient and for the surgeon. And sometimes multiple injections, more than three, four, five, six, seven, ten, depending upon the, the improvement of the patient, you have to give injections, intravitreal injections of the anti-VEGF. Anti-VEGF means the vascular and anti-vascular endothelial growth factor medications. The intravitreal injections of long-acting steroids like triamcinone tri acetonide may also be required in those cases which are which give some resistant or less improvement after anti-VEGF therapy.
okay so the diabetic maculopathy required anti vegf therapy intravitreal injection of long acting corticosteroids focal laser therapy is usually uh, applied to the area of the succinate maculopathy where there is a leaking uh, aneurysm or the leaking blood vessels and there is a heart exudates circle of the heart exudates among so if it is an extra foveal area you have to do a focal laser application to to the succinate pathy to the to the clinically significant macular edema and to the leaking aneurysm away from the fovea seen as area of the leakage on the ffa the photocoagulation in the form of a grid in case of diffuse leakage around the macula so there are two types of the argon laser photocoagulation procedures are done for the management of the diabetic maculopathy one is a focal laser only a small area is treated and second is what is called as a grid laser and if you can see this if uh, you can see this is the pattern on the right side this is what is an prp all the retina which is around this this vascular arcade is treated all of the retina is burned with a small 200 uh, micron meter diameter uh, burns of the retina and so this is the area which is left and this will give rise to a the of a uh, i mean uh, further progression of the visual loss will be less and the central vision will remain this is the type where you give a we give a grid type of laser that you apply this area around the the temporal part of the macula to come on this side only the area around the vascular arcade is burned where there are the so, so that to prevent this uh, to treat this uh, uh, maculopathy so this is again the injection of the intravenous this is a Uh, just to show that how the give injection is given you enter the needle from in the, in the pars plana and you go into the vitreous cavity with the needle and inject this 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 appears to be a larger amount of the of the drug but it is only 0.05 ml and it will go diffuse through the vitreous into the retina and to the macular area and so it will improve the macular edema similarly the pars plana vitrectomy this is a uh, you see the pars plana vitrectomy there are three ports one is for the this one is on on the is the is a vitrector and there is a small cutter in this area and and the uh, the the it is going to cut the vitreous and to aspirate it this is a light which gives you the vision and this port gives to give a inflow of the fluid to keep the intraocular pressure normal and to maintain the shape of the eyeball so that you can see the things so this is what is called as a three port pars plana vitrectomy just as a part of the of the treatment of the proliferative diabetic retinopathy so uh, again repeating all these things diabetic being a multi systemic disease affecting the microvasculature and the macrovasculature in ophthalmology in the retina it is the microvascular angiopathy and it affects the most important part of the eyeball that is the retina and it causes a, a loss of pericyt thickening of the basement membrane the changes in the within the lumen of the rbcs and the platelets causing occlusion ischemia ischemia produces the vascular endothelial growth factor and it causes neovascularization all this is pathogenesis of diabetic retinopathy then the complications of the neovascularization this include the uh, uh, retinal hemorrhages the vitreous hemorrhages and the maculopathy and these are the three things which it, which causes decrease in the vision and the management of the diabetic retinopathy they includes the control of the diabetes management of the maculopathy and management of the complications of neovascularization thank you very much this is the end of the lecture those who try who are trying to enter the class during the during the last 5 minutes are not allowed today and so is a better to to come in time if you like to have any question you can chat on on uh, on uh, with your messages on the on in the whatsapp group there are still 2 3 minutes left do you want to ask any questions
Okay. Thank you very much for today.